What is the Public Services Network, PSN? What is its impact on public sector IT? What contribution can it make to the public sector in a time of austerity, change and transformation? To answer these and other questions, we have three stakeholders from all sides of the PSN debate here today. I have representatives here with me here from central government, local government and the supply community who will be able to answer with expertise uh, some of the crucial questions to do with PSN delivery, implementation and value. So I'd like to introduce, without any further delay, our three panellists, starting with uh, my colleague on the left, Craig. Can you tell us a bit about yourself, please, Craig? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, my name's Craig Ablett. I'm the PSN Programme Director uh, within Cabinet Office, and that's charged with delivering PSN for all of, uh, all of UK government. And I also have additional role. I'm the PSN Authority Operations Director, which is looking at the ongoing maintenance of PSN beyond the change programme. Uh, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, Craig, are you a, uh, a civil servant or a technologist or a mixture of the two? A uh, mixture of the two. Uh, I, am a, I am a civil servant and have been for around the last 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. Started off in private sector, then went to work in the uh, local government and then uh, made the transition into central government. But my career anchor is IT, and yeah. uh, but over the last four or five years, much more into the business change arena. Thank you so much. I'd now like to introduce uh, Sander. Morning. My name is uh, Sander Christel. I'm the Chief Information Officer for Staffordshire County Council. So I'm responsible for all IT for the council, but also the service that we deliver to, to the schools, for instance, and to other uh, local authority and public sector partners. How long have you been in position there, Sander? I've been uh, at Staffordshire County Council for approximately uh, five, five years okay. and in uh, local authorities for probably about seven or eight. Oh, thank you, Craig. That's, that's excellent. And finally, our uh, representative from the supply community, Rod. Hello, I'm Rod Halstead. Uh, I'm the Managing Director for Cisco, looking after their public services business in the UK and Ireland. How long have you been involved in public sector IT, Rod? Oh, a long time. Uh, possibly uh, close to 25 years. I uh, worked in government for a long period of time, both the Australian and British governments, and then moved into the supply community about 12, 13 years ago. Uh, I've been with Cisco about 18 months, and mm -hmm. I look after their public sector across the spectrum of Defence, intelligence, central government, local government, uh, healthcare, uh, justice, transport, policing. And the public services network will impact across all of those areas and of vital interest to, to not only Cisco but the supplier community generally. Thank you very much. I think we can agree that uh, all participants have something relevant to say, I think, about PSN. Craig, um, I think we should uh, uh, go to yourself first, to somebody who is um, you know, very much at the centre of things. Um, perhaps we can talk about why PSN is important to... The government. Why, why, why is this program being set up? What's the motivation here? Uh, it's uh, thank you for that uh, opening question. And from my perspective, there are three responses to that. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being that PSN is a foundation of the government's ICT strategy in central government. Uh, it's a vital component. It must be delivered, and will be a great enabler to other aspects of uh, the government ICT strategy, including mm -hmm. cloud and hosting and user devices, for okay. example. Um, secondly, it's vital for UK government because it's going to bring uh, significant savings to UK government, both in central government and in non-central government. And maybe we'll get onto that, okay. what that might look like uh, shortly. And the, the third reason, and, and really quite fundamental, is PSN is a platform for public services delivery of the future. It's about really enabling the shared services agenda, uh, in both central and non-central government. I hope that we'll hear from Crystal uh, uh, on that point. Uh, Sorry, Sandra. Is the PSN that we hear so much about, I mean, you know, why is it sexy? Is it, isn't it just plumbing? Isn't it just a network? Do we need another network? Um, is, is PSN sexy? Uh, well, it depends if you're a technologist and whether you're really into the... Uh, the, the, the network uh, governs. Uh, there's certainly people very excited about the technology uh, and I think that's really, really important, but the technology itself is not about the business change. There's an enabler, it's a key foundation, it must be right, must be secure, must be reliable. But the real journey for PSN is that business transformation. 
and really leveraging this, uh, this great enabler for uh, UK government. I ask the question, uh, Craig, simply because there obviously are existing public sector networks, there's an NHS network, there's been a lot of uh, effort in the years gone by put into, you know, common secure networks across government. What's different about the PSN? Um, in 2009, there was a uh, study uh, undertaken of the network and telecommunications in government. Uh, at that time, there were over 2,000 uh, public sector networks okay. in, the, in the United Kingdom. Right. Uh, and probably to answer your question, um, you wouldn't design it that way. Uh, you would uh, take a much more logical now, a much more thorough uh, you know, analysis and architecture of a network solution. You certainly would not have 2,000. In many cases, we have sites, buildings and uh, for delivery of public services that have uh, certainly more than one, in some cases up to 10 or even 15 network mm, connections mm. into it, simply because that's the way that the, uh, the public uh, network provision developed over the last few decades. Right. Um, so to answer, answer your question, it's really a really complex situation at the moment. It's also incredibly costly mm. to, to support that and fund that from a UK government. So uh, to a certain extent, it's a rationalisation of what we ha have now, or is it, are you asking people to throw out the old and bring in new things, which might be potentially expensive? No, it's... Um, uh, and it, it depends. Uh, some of these networks are uh, of incredibly good value, still uh, still very current, and we wish to leverage them. Mm. Uh, so they can, uh, they can be adapted at very little cost and be integrated into the public services uh, network, and that's absolutely right and absolutely uh, legitimate route to take. However, what we are finding is a lot of customers are coming to the end of their uh, the lifespan of their networks and infrastructure. And it's really an opportune time to then say, well, actually, let's get on to PSN, let's adopt the PSN and deliver uh, that network and telecommunications uh, services over it. So it's a twin-track approach. Okay. It's about intercepting what's already there and getting on to PSN and also, where appropriate, procuring new services uh, for PSN and bringing those on to PSN as well. If that's the vision then what are you guys doing to create the reality? Where are we with kind of the delivery, the marketplace for PSN? Um, the marketplace for, for, for PSN is very significant in UK government. Um, in 2009, uh, the, the estimate was 2.6 billion uh, per annum spend on network and telecommunications. Uh, about 1.3 billion of that was in central government mm. and uh, the other 1.3 uh, billion in... Uh, in the non-central government. Yes. Um, to create the marketplace, which is a, a real drive of uh, the programme, uh, uh, we, we have to take, first of all, the demand side. And uh, so that's a lot of awareness, uh, a lot of setting standards, um, really driving up the communications across the public sector around uh, PSN. And on the Cabinet Office website, yeah. uh, you'll be able to find there now published uh, transition plans towards PSN mm. for both central government and non-central government. We felt that was a really important step to take to really signal into the new marketplace for PSN the demand. So this is a strong demand signal coming through into the marketplace. How are you doing on your milestones against delivery? We're doing really well, actually, almost surprisingly, for a ICT central government uh, delivery. We remain on track. Uh, and I'll come on and discuss, uh, hopefully in a little while, about the, uh, the, the services uh, frameworks that we're going to have in place and the connectivity. So that's the demand side. On the supply side, we've been working very, very closely with industry. And this has been really a, a key uh, feature of the PSM programme in, mm. its, in its life. We've been very careful not to set new standards or really change uh, what the supply industry was doing anyway and what the supply industry does for its private sector uh, customers. We've been very careful with that regard. So I've worked with them in terms of setting the standards and making sure that we're leveraging what's in existence and what will be the future for uh, the supply uh, market. We've also been working closely with the something called the PSN uh, GB, which is a trade association okay. that many suppliers are, uh, of PSN uh, are engaged with, and we meet with them very regularly. And they're a great supporter for us, and uh, you know, uh, we support them as well. 
Um, so we have the uh, strong uh, demand signals coming through from the customers. We've got the, uh, the supply community on board. And we've got them highly integrated into the, uh, the PSM programme. And the final aspect of that is bringing that marketplace together to enable the customers and suppliers to come together in a, in a, uh, in a, in a strong way, and that's through the use of two frameworks. How are we doing on creating the, if you like, the, the right buying culture, though, Craig? I mean, uh, you're talking about setting standards and working with the technology, that's great. You're talking about quite a complex situation already in terms of many networks out there. Um, if I'm a public sector customer who wants to embrace PSN, who um, uh, perhaps feel there's, there's the, at least potential value in it, um, what do you think I need to do to start moving towards it? Um, if I just answer that in two ways, uh, both central government and then non-central sure. government uh, perspective. Uh, when I joined uh, the PSN programme uh, last year, I was really encouraged by the non-central government appetite for PSN. Uh, and this was very much a, uh, not uh, you're doing this to us. Mm. The, their point was, and quite rightly, this isn't happening fast enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to move and we need to make uh, traction with uh, PSN. And in many areas, they actually are, and we're going to hear from uh, hopefully Sander and, and his plans towards uh, towards PSN. So that's qu quite a novelty. I get a good drive and a good push from the non-central uh, government space. Okay. In, in central government, it's, it, it's different. We've taken uh, both a carrot and stick approach. Mm. Uh, we're being very clear on the benefits that can be achieved uh, by PSN and we've got some excellent support from not only uh, the, the appropriate minister, but also the government CIO. And we have in place a uh, a mandatory regime yes. for adoption of PSN in central government, mm. which is just creating that flywheel, that momentum mm. to drive PSN and make it a reality for UK government. We're not there yet, though. No. Right? Um, what would you see as the um, your on your to-do list of challenges to get rid of? What do you think still needs to be addressed out there? We are, see we are seeing some really strong... Um, signals coming through from both the suppliers and, and the customers and we are seeing adoption we're seeing uh, customers coming through for accreditation so it, it's looking really really good with some big central government departments have recently announced their transition to psn okay. which is really positive and uh, within a few months we'll also be announcing a number uh, two other really large central government departments moving to psn and going uh -huh. through uh, the framework, so it's going to be a watch this, uh, watch this space. Okay. What we do need to do next, and there are some good examples and some ca good case studies of pace, and we need more of that. Mm. Uh, I think it's um, at the moment it is, it's it still seems to to many people quite nebulous and mm. quite theoretical. It's actually not. It's it's real and it's it's there, mm. but we need some really strong examples, you know, from a variety of cases that went and just say, well, you know, as an example. Uh, you know, staffs are doing it, or Kent and Hampshire are doing it, or uh, MOG are doing it, or HMRC are doing it, but really get that material out and a good understanding of it. We're going to be hearing in a second or two um, from a, somebody who's actually been doing it at the coalface, which is great, so you've got one of your case studies there, as it were, but it's, it's what, it's Q2 2012 now. Mm -hmm. um, when do you think we'll cross the finish line and you might think of the wider public sector as adopting PSN in the majority? 2015? I, Further I, out? No, I I, I, th I want to say as well before 2015. Um, we um, we have targets to meet for benefit realisation uh -huh. in central government. But, you know, it's not. Um, it, it only applies to central government, sure. not to to non-central government. Um, we uh, we we've significantly exceeded our uh, savings target for the 11-12 financial year. Okay. Uh, and we're on target for the £100 million saving in the 12-13 uh, fin sure. financial year and, sure. and thereafter. Um, there'll be a number of, of, uh, of signals that'll come through and tell us, are we making uh, the right progress? Uh, personally, uh, I would like to see by 2015 around 90% oh, of right. uh, public sector organisations on on, uh, on PSN mm. and certainly by uh, this time next year uh, significantly more than 50% of the public sector. Right, on, on well PSN. that's more rapid than I thought, that's interesting, mm. thank you. It's okay. important. Right, okay. 
Well, can we pause you there for a minute or two, please, Craig? We want to talk to somebody who's actually been doing this reality. Sander, um, can you give us um, uh, some of the background to your organisation's decision to start looking at PSN? Yeah. Um, in uh, 2010, we saw that our, uh, our contracts for, for networking, telephony and uh, our contact centre came up for renewal. Right. And we were looking at a cost-effective way uh, to replace that. We already shared our network, with our, particularly with our schools. Mm. Uh, it linked to our district councils as well. And we really wanted to take that collaboration forward. And obviously the PSN programme was in place. We looked at the PSN programme. Uh, we very much believed that that was, was the way to go. Uh, and we ran a competitive dialogue process because at that time the PSN framework uh, hadn't, been, no. hadn't been awarded yet. Sure, sure. Um, we, we ran that competitive dialogue process. We made sure that that was transparent to all of our public sector partners in Staffordshire as well. Uh, and after the uh, award, uh, we had uh, all of our, well, most of our schools sign up to, to that PSN. Uh, obviously, we provide it to all of the county council sites. Can you give us an example, a sense of scale there for people who aren't familiar with your county? Is it uh, mainly urban, mainly rural, mixture of the two? How many, it's how a, many nodes are we talking about? Yeah, it's a mix, mixture of the, of the two, really. Yeah. There, there, there are some... Uh, some some urban areas, but uh, it, it, it's mainly uh, it, there are vast um, areas where there's uh, there's not a lot there. Sure. there. There might be a school or there might be a, a GP, yeah. but there's there, there's there's not a lot really mm -hmm. uh, with regards to urban conurbations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the county is about eight hundred and thirty thousand residents. Uh, the county council itself has about thirty thousand staff. Right. So it's quite a, uh, a significant and complex environment. Were you, um, Craig talked about some of the um, duplication and multiplicity of networks. Was that something that sounds familiar to you guys? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of the, all of the public sector partners in Staffordshire, even though we do a lot of collaboration, but mm -hmm. all of the uh, local authority partners, police, fire, uh, health, uh, have their own networks. Right. And sometimes even within those organisations, they have separate networks as well. Yes. Which, uh, like Greg just said, if, if you would design it from scratch, that's definitely not the way you do it. No, of course not. What, what is your vision then in terms of what Staffordshire wants to do with the PSN idea? Where are you in kind of that, that place? Well, for us, the, the, the PSN solution itself is a, is a solution really in three parts. It's First of all, it's connection, which uh, it, 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 it doesn't take an expert to figure out that if you duplicate that, there's absolutely no need for it and it's very expensive. So, <laughs> so that, that's the first part. Uh, the second part is the services that we deliver over okay. that. Uh, and the PSN contract itself incorporates telephony and contact centre solutions uh, okay. as well. Good. But we hope to extend that. For instance, we, we already have a uh, shared CRM between all the local authorities in Staffordshire. Those types of services are much easier to provide over a PSN. Okay. And then the third part is really just uh, the contract itself. Uh, for instance, our neighbours, uh, Wolverhampton City Council, have decided to, uh, or they have now, replace their education network uh, through our contract. So the benefit of that is that they don't need to run a procurement exercise. Hmm. Is, the, is it a ma ma uh, an, uh, an issue here of ripping out and replacing or overlaying or something entirely different? For, for going from a non-PSN to a PSN environment, what are the kind of practical things one needs to do? For us, it's really an iterative process and um, it, it was slightly oppor opportunistic because the county council's network needed replacing, the telephony said, sure. needed, needed replacing. So there is a, a real core there already in place uh, for, for Staffordshire. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have decided, or most of the public organisations have decided, that they will come on board with the PSN okay. as their contracts expire, right. or when the technology starts to uh, start, has to be replaced. That, uh, that's I really see. the right time, as far as we are concerned. I have to ask you the, the money question, Sander. Yes. Uh, obviously, we're all very aware of the context that PSN is happening in, and Craig himself mentioned cross savings as part of the, the driver here. Is cost-saving a, a big part of your vision here, or is it uh, uh, an add-on? I don't know. I, for me, the cost-saving itself uh, clearly makes the business case stack up. But as far as we're concerned, the public services network 
isn't actually about necessarily about those cost savings of that network. Okay. It's more about collaborative working of the public sector in Staffordshire on the front line. We're doing very innovative stuff, uh, for instance, with regards to social care. Uh, we have now launched, on the 1st of April, we launched uh, the biggest integrated health trust in the country, which means that approximately a thousand of our social workers moved into a health, health environment to provide end-to-end -end services to the public. Okay. Now, the, the vision of, of, uh, of, the, of the council and, and of our councillors who understand this very, very well mm. uh, is that you need the right plumbing in place yeah. to help those types yep. of transitions and to help those types of end-to-end -end, uh, end -end services. But on top of that, yeah, because yeah. Uh, you know the finance people and the IT people look at the uh, pounds and pennies. Absolutely. Uh, we had a, uh, an est estimate saving when we started this process of probably a million pounds for the for the public sector in Staffordshire. Now that we have start, started rolling it out and uh, partners come on board that we might not have anticipated uh, coming on board, our careful estimate is that that goes up to at least a million and a half uh, a year. So that's good news to so the taxpayer. So that's significant bottom line saving by doing this. But that wasn't your primary driver, it's the services and improved public services that you think PSN is going to enable? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, it, it's about um, rationalising our property estate. Sure. So it's easier to share properties with, uh, with, with, with other partners. Mm -hmm. It's about providing end-to-end -end services on the front line, being able to uh, securely share data right. and, and systems. And that all helps that service that we deliver to the public out there, and that's what it's all about in the end, and that was the vision. Absolutely. In terms of building uh, up to this, um, were there any kind of challenges that you needed to address in terms of moving from your old situation to this new situation? Yeah, I think there's always challenges to overcome, and um, we are really good at partnership working in Staffordshire, but partnership working is complex and it always takes a lot of... It takes a lot of resource, it takes the right relationships, um, and uh, there are some challenges to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, so some of those are uh, people need to have a good understanding of what PSN really means. Okay. And not just within the IT teams, but it's important that senior business leaders actually understand what we're trying to achieve with regards to the PSN. It's right. An, it's not about technology. So there's an education element? The, 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 there definitely is, yeah. Okay. There definitely is. Okay. Uh, and, and the other one is... Um, <coughs> Uh, we made sure that our contract was very flexible, that people still had their own autonomy. So when a partner comes on board, they can decide, for instance, still if they want to manage their end connections themselves mm -hmm. or that they want to have them outsourced, managed, or, or, or that we can manage it for them. Yes. And that flexibility is really important because people would like to keep their autonomy to a degree. So it's a matter of balancing a number of stakeholder interests and sensitivities there perhaps right you have to make sure the business leaders are on board you have to make sure the supplier community is in the right place for you it's not a it's not as simple as just turning off a switch no it isn't it it, it requires a lot of um and i think that's where the county council uh, because we're the obviously we were the lead partner in this in this procurement uh, we took a slight risk that uh, our, our, our councillors and our senior managers clearly saw uh, was it's a benefit to Staffordshire and therefore we need to take that risk is to do the procurement, to do the procurement in the way we did, mm. to be the lead partner in, in, within the contract, mm -hmm. um, to make sure that people understand that we put our money where our mouth is and uh, we have also been very open and transparent about costs and how we are managing this. This is not a money-making exercise for Staffordshire County Council, this is actually putting something in place that will benefit uh, the public services in Staffordshire. To, to end our time with you uh, for this conversation just for a minute, uh, Sander, if I was going to ask you to sum up the two or three major points, perhaps in the language a, a chief executive of a council would understand, based on your experience, what do you think your sentences would be? Well, Public services everywhere, particularly in local authorities, are significantly changing. We're becoming com more commissioning organisations, we're working more with others, mm -hmm. we're going to have to share more, more data and information, both for customer service but also for things like safeguarding, etc. Right. And it's really important to have secure 
and, uh, and shared um, networks in place, really. And that's exactly what the PSN is trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Second one is obviously cost savings. You know, a million and a half uh, a, a, a year for the taxpayer is a lot of money. Yep. This is cheaper. Absolutely. And the more services we provide on that network, maybe through the cloud uh, in a secure way, the cheaper it will, uh, it, it, it will become. You may have lost them at cloud, but OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you. Seriously. Um, great. Uh, Rod, now, obviously, uh, Sander talked there about the importance of the dialogue with the supplier. Uh, and uh, as a representative of a major supplier, Cisco, um, you talked about PSN um, being important across your portfolio. Can you characterise kind of where Cisco is with PSN and what you see as what you want to do more in this in this sector area? Yeah, of course. Um, so, so we've been involved since the outset and uh, we've been working with the Cabinet Office far back as 2008 in helping shape the agenda, mm -hmm. working on the work streams, uh, on security, on, on the technical, on the governance and on the transition and, and just helping uh, cabinet officers, and not only us, you know, other industry players have as well, in just shaping the agenda, you know, what the transition plans might be, uh, how you might move forward. I think we're certainly committed, and I know many in industry are committed to making this work, and we're working very closely, because it is it is a major transition, uh, you know, to a different place, and uh, with that transition comes opportunity. So from our, our point of view, it, it's a major opportunity uh, for suppliers and Cisco indeed. Is it, um, and please accept this in the, in the spirit of um, trying to understand, is it a matter of uh, sometimes people are suspicious that a new big trendy thing comes along and a supplier basically rebadges everything. Oh, it's, it's cloud now. Oh, no, it's PSN now, or whatever. It, to what extent has Cisco kind of dynamically changed its product portfolio to kind of help make PSN a reality? Well, well I think and others can, uh, others can comment, uh, including Craig and Sander, but I think the underlying technology is not that different. You know, it, it, and we've been in the networking business for a long, long of time. Of course, of course. And, and so the products that we produce and, and, and manufacture and deploy you know, are consistent. Um, we've had those products accredited, um, and so clearly they're, they're fit for purpose, in, in, indeed. In un meeting Craig's standards, right? Meeting, meeting Craig's standards, both on a security and a, and a technical point of view. Um, so from my perspective, it's not a matter of rebadging, you know, it's a matter of rec recognising where the government's taking this agenda, rationalising 2,000 networks to a lesser number, you know, does make sense and uh, I think it's an opportunity for us to support that. Uh, will PSN materially change Cisco's activities in the UK then? It will have an impact on you? Um, it'll, it'll certainly give us a point of focus that may have not been there before, but I think that's a good thing, you know, and I think industry generally, together with Cisco, and we've been working with uh, lots and lots of partners that support government in this space, and I think they're, they're aligning their interest in their business towards this agenda. And we've mentioned GCLAD in passing as well. These are two, and the ICT strategy. These are aspects of government as they move to a different place mm. that I think we, we in the supply community, and Cisco particularly, you know, will want to pack around and help them achieve that agenda. Oh, can you be specific, Rod, about things that Cisco is doing to help uh, customers like Sander, other customers who are trying to think about PSN? Mm. Um, uh, how, if I was an existing local authority or uh, uh, NHS authority or what have you, wanted to think yeah. about PSN, what would Cisco be able to do for me, yeah. as it were? Yeah, no, of course. And so I mentioned, you know, we've been involved since the early days and, and that's been about shaping and, and helping understand yeah. the, the, the journey, if you like, because it is a journey from where they are to where they want to be and how, how can they move along that path. We've taken the, uh, the initiative of developing collateral uh, that we can actually play into the marketplace, both into the end client and into particular industries and indeed through partners. Right. So some white papers, um, technical and business uh, insights, both uh, business life cycles in terms of maturity life cycles, how you might move along a pathway of where you are today right. and what decisions you need to take. As, you, as Sander says, you know, you look at the business and you look at the changing nature of the business as you move through uh, different partnering strategies, different intersection points between different aspects of local government or indeed uh, mainstream government, uh, central government depart departments and agencies and therefore looking at the business uh, priorities that you might have and how you may need to change your technical underpinning support to achieve that. And so we're, we're giving insights to how they might do that. It, it is um, 
a generic overview and then they can actually take that on board and tailor it to their needs. And we work very closely with our partners uh, to build products and services that can be compliant with uh, the needs that Craig and the Cabinet Office are outlining. Craig has got, um, uh, he talked about his carrot and stick and there's a mandated approach and like it or not, as it were, Whitehall will get into PSN, that's fine. Yep. Have you had a, a, any sort of dialogue, Rod, with a, um, a CIO or a chief executive of a public sector organisation who's just thinking, surely they'd be, uh, it'd be uh, legitimate to say, I've got better things to worry about? Mm. I think it's a whole mix uh, in the marketplace, inevitably, given that it is a marketplace and you've got different people coming from different points of view. Of course. And we mentioned in passing earlier, uh, you know, there's a health network and there's a police network yeah, yeah. and there are established networks that are fit for purpose, operate today to support uh, the business needs of, of those communities and those sectors. And I think it'll take a little bit more time for them to come to the realisation of how they interface and interlink into the PSN. Mm. But the interesting thing that we've seen, and, and, and Sanders a case in point, in the last 12, 18 months, we've seen lots of activity in the local government uh, space, even before the announcement okay. uh, of the framework uh, that Craig will mention later. So I think there is a re uh, an awareness becoming more and more of the benefits of this, uh, uh, of this framework and how you might adopt that technology and, and PSN in particular. So I don't see a lot of negativity. I see people standing back and just thinking about the timing of it okay. and when best might they move forward. And as Sanders said, you know, if you're coming to end of life on, on certain technologies, it's a natural decision that you might make as you move into this place. Okay. Uh, and as, as Craig mentioned, you know, the government's clearly keen to make sure that some of the central government departments and agencies move down this path more quickly and, 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 show, the, and show the pathfinder, if you like, of, of what the benefits uh, can be and, and how they might be achieved through central departments. But I, I think, from my perspective, from what we've seen, a lot of the momentum's coming from the local government sector. So... Maybe we can open this up now, gentlemen, to uh, uh, get your perspectives uh, on, on these, on these uh, questions as well. Um, if, if Craig's right and we're looking at um, rapid adoption, um, if uh, Sanders' experience is something that exemplifies the benefits of PSN, if you're saying, Rod, that um, people are you know, genuinely coming to, they're interested, uh, is PSN you know, a done deal? Is there, is there nothing else to worry about? It's inevitable now. Um, I'm always incredibly cautious with uh, anyone that ever says it's a done deal. Right. Uh, I still believe it needs to be carefully managed. Um, we're putting in the two strategic procurement frameworks mm. uh, now, and that's effectively creating the new marketplace yes. uh, for PSN. So we'll have to see how that develops, and we're going to have to uh, be proactive in terms of driving the demand into those uh, frameworks. And we're going to have to learn more lessons from that too. You know, this is this is still new. Uh -huh. uh, although the the concept of the network and the PSN is actually, it's, you know, it's it isn't new, and it's you know, in some respects, it's not brain surgery either. This is this is about uh, what happens elsewhere in the private sector and bringing it to bear at an you know significantly aggregated level uh, for for the public sector. Um, so we're, we're but we have set off on this journey and it is a journey mm. uh, and we need to learn our lessons from, uh, from that and, and uh, progress and adapt uh, adapt to it so so there's still stuff to do Craig oh the, the, yeah there is there is stuff to do I mean the, the, the core elements of PSN are are in place we you know we have authority to control it we have you know core standards set where you know, the core services are in, are in place but there's more we can do and more we should do. Mm. Uh, you know, are there more standards that would help and help industry and help the public sector deliver uh, greater value? Um, you know, do we uh, do we in the future procure in a different way than what we're procuring uh, for this? Well, I've got a, that's my cue to ask you the inevitable SME question because mm -hmm. uh, no, Cisco is not an SME. It's a very well established tier one player. Mm -hmm. Is you know. PSN something that the, the smaller mid mid range suppliers can play in as well. It is. I mean, we when we awarded the uh, connectivity framework uh, in uh, in April uh, this year, I think most people expected that that would just be for large providers. It, Indeed, it's limited to to uh, to twelve companies, and I think it's fair to say the uh, the usual suspects are on the uh, are on the framework. But actually, so are two SMEs. Right. And although that may seem, well, it's only two out of 12, 
that's still significant. Sure. You know, an, S, an SME is, is gone and engaged with us and and uh, wants to be part of that PSN journey. I'm, I'm really, really encouraged. But I think we need to do more. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, is, is this, um, have, have we gone far enough? And I think we need to challenge ourselves on that. And actually, uh, does the next iteration of the frameworks and next iteration of PSN, do we open up the market further and wider as you know, best we can to drive uh, new companies and, and draw them in and create the innovation mm. and the driver in this market. So not well, over yet, more to do. I might ask Sander, um, I'm sure you have dialogue with your peers in terms of the local government IT leadership community, Sander. Yeah. Are they, uh, do you think that Rod's characterisation of them as being enthusiastic is fair? Do you see buy-in from, from that element? Yeah, I think, I think in general, particularly local authorities are, are quite well engaged with, with regards to these programmes. And I've, uh, I've spoken to a lot of them because obviously we're, we're, we're one of the ones that are at, at the forefront at uh, of some of Pathfinder. this. Pathfinder. Yeah, Pathfinder, uh, absolutely. So I'm speaking to them and uh, they are very, uh, very engaged with this programme. I think where it's probably more difficult at this moment in time to engage people is probably in, particularly in the health uh, oh, okay. sector and uh, we've been very lucky in in, in staffordshire uh, all of our south staffordshire health partners have signed up to, to the to the psn but i think there's more to do particularly with regards to the central funding that the health partners are getting at oh, the moment point. which really needs to be linked with with the psn and i understand that's one of the things that the mm. cabinet office is focusing on mm -hmm. at this moment in time okay and that's really important because right. if we put barriers in people's way to, to, to sign up to, to, to this, that, that, wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be a good thing, clearly. Is that a, an example, perhaps, Craig, of an existing network investment being played out as long as it can be, the N3, right? It is. And, um, I mean, the, the question of the health and the N3 position has come up a number of times sure. in the... Uh, in the uh, in the non-central uh, mm. non government space. Uh, we're working very closely with Connecting for Health to, uh, on a number of fronts, the, the first, of, uh, first of which they're going to make their services currently available uh, only through N3 will be available over PSN oh, okay. uh, So we're working with them, they're going through the accreditation process. Right. So that's, that's a good that's step. That's progress, yeah. Uh, we've, uh, we've also uh, worked with uh, uh, the leaders in Connecting for Health and with the local government CIO community and with our programme, we've issued a tripartite note with respect to the health position and uh, what it means for in the, uh, the non-central government space. And, um, and there's, there's two aspects to that. Is what can we do today under the current N3 arrangements, yeah. which is an existing contract? Indeed, indeed. And uh, so we've got the agreement in place that uh, you know, regions can compete mm -hmm. under what's called the COIN and uh, try and win business for the coin in terms of that uh, and link it in with their PSN uh, delivery. But also, we've also agreed that the next iteration of what happens beyond N3 uh, to get really strong engagement from the non-central government space and mm. really engage on their programme boards and on their design and their thinking to try and get that mix coming through now uh, more formally into the connecting. Mm. So we've got you know, progress in central, progress in local government, beginnings of activity in the wider public sector? It, it is beginners, but you know, it, it's, a, it's a phrase sometimes used in, in central government. This, this is about juggernauts, uh, you know, huge infrastructure, you know, significant investment, a lot of resource thrown at these uh, networks and, and these departments. And uh, we shouldn't underestimate the challenge mm -hmm. it takes to align uh, not just one juggernaut, but actually there's 10, got a 15, fleet of them 20, there. there's yeah. a fleet of them. Yeah. Mm to head off in the right direction sure. and create this mar marketplace. Uh, you know, it's not a, not a done deal, but we're well on our way. As the signs are very, very positive and encouraging. Perhaps we could move to sum up then, gentlemen, and close our time together with, um, I can't resist a little bit of crystal ball gazing time. Perhaps I could ask you in turn to, um, if we were to have the same conversation in six months, 12 months, how do you think the landscape will have changed and either kind of progress and achievements you're talking about there? Perhaps we could start with you, you Rod. Um. Um, I think you'll see a significant take-up and um, uh, depending on um, 
the services uh, framework and as it comes out and the alignment uh, uh, with that and connectivity and therefore having the suite yeah. uh, available, I think you'll find not only the local government space but certainly in the central government space, you know, there'll be a significant take up and you'll have a you know, what I would hope to be a critical mass of, of capability so people can look to it, you know, talk to Sander and, and, and colleagues like Sander and understand the benefits and the dynamic okay. and therefore embrace it more readily. So I'm, I'm, I'm very positive uh, about the future. More, more real-life case studies, more projects? Yeah, no, there will about. be. There will be, I, I think. Um, uh, and, and again, as Craig said, what you need is to get one of the juggernauts. Yeah. And once you get one of the juggernauts and they're, and they're live and they're operating and people can see, uh, A, the transition and how they managed it, yes. which is important, you know, because coming is. from where you were to where you wish to be and managing the business continuity is going to be a key, a key issue. So once we can get a juggernaut in place and a series of, of local government uh, organisations embracing and, and, and using on a day-to-day -day basis... I think uh, that will start the momentum and, and it will grow. Sander, will there be more <laughs> Staffordshire's in six months, a year's time, do you think? And again, will Staffordshire have made more progress? Yeah, definitely. And I, I think, uh, like Rod says, take-up will be much higher. That, that's one thing. But I think the conversation will also move from talking about connectivity and talking about savings from those connectivities mm to services okay. and to, to real frontline services yeah. and, and to those, those, those benefits. And I think this program uh, and, for instance, the G Cloud program as well, the, it's, it's a significantly different IT program to the ones that central government has been running in the past. It's really about taking those blockages away for people to do things, to do things locally, mm. um, but, but with a national wrapper on it. And Have you got a particular target yourself in terms of what you want to do in Staffordshire? I'm, I'm, I can't imagine you're finished. No, I think it's uh, it's never finished. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, particularly providing the right services that we can share uh, for the benefit of the people out there. That, that that's exactly the way we we want to move. So driving forward with sharing. That's Absolutely. that's a priority for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And finally, Craig, if you can uh, uh, can be brief. I know you'll you'll promise the world, right? PSN will solve everything. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll settle for strong, steady progress okay. uh, in in the uh, in the PSN journey, and I hope the conversation does start a change and and reflect on it's about the services and much yep. more citizen focused. Yep. You know, by necessity we have to talk about the technology. We have to talk about. Uh, you know the money and the, and the savings, and that's you know absolutely important part of Standards, the program. Standards, security, it's, exactly. But this is actually about fundamental business change, mm. and delivering services better uh, to citizens. And I would like to think it's not twelve months, and hopefully it'll be a few years uh, time. We don't talk about the internet and the technology of the internet. We talk about the great services and the value it that's brings. You know, I would like to think the success of PSN in, you know, three, four years' time mm. is we don't actually talk about PSN anymore. Mm. We mm. talk about the services that are delivered to citizens. OK. Well, I hope you think that we have addressed uh, some of the interesting questions, challenges, vision around PSN, and hope that you found our conversation useful in making your own decision about achieving some of the things that uh, our stakeholders have talked about today. Thank you for your time, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.